Operation Torch was the British-American invasion of French North Africa during the North African campaign of the Second World War which started on November 8, 1942. The Soviet Union had pressed the United States and United Kingdom to start operations in Europe and open the Second Front to reduce the pressure of German forces on the Soviet troops. While the American commanders favored Operation Sledgehammer, landing in occupied Europe as soon as possible, the British commanders believed that such a course would end in disaster. An attack on French North Africa was proposed instead, which would clear the Axis powers from North Africa, improve naval control of the Mediterranean Sea, and prepare for an invasion of southern Europe in 1943. American President Franklin D. Roosevelt suspected the African operation would rule out an invasion of Europe in 1943 but agreed to support British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Background The Allies planned an Anglo-American invasion of northwestern Africa a year of Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia, territory nominally in the hands of the Vichy French government. With much of North Africa already under Allied control. This would allow the Allies to carry out a pincer operation against Axis forces in North Africa. The Vichy French had around 125,000 soldiers in the territories as well as coastal artillery, 210 operational but out-of-date tanks and about 500 aircraft, half of which were D-Wuitin D-520 fighters a Euro equal to many British and US fighters. In addition, there were 10 or so warships and 11 submarines at Casablanca. The Allies believed that the Vichy French forces would not fight, partly because of information supplied by American Consul Robert Daniel Murphy in Algiers. The French were former allies of the US and the American troops were instructed not to fire unless they were fired upon. However, they harbored suspicions that the Vichy French Navy would bear a grudge over the British action at Mers el Kabir in 1940. An assessment of the sympathies of the French forces in North Africa was essential, and plans were made to secure their cooperation, rather than resistance. German support for the Vichy French came in the shape of air support. Several Luftwaffe bomber wings undertook anti-shipping strikes against Allied ports in Algiers and along the North African coast. General Dwight D. Eisenhower was given command of the operation, and he set up his headquarters in Gibraltar. The Allied naval commander of the expeditionary force would be Admiral Sir Andrew Cunningham. His deputy was Vice Admiral Sir Bertram Ramsey, who would plan the amphibious landings. Allied operational plans, planners identified Iran and also Algiers and Casablanca as key targets. Ideally there should also be a landing at Tunis to secure Tunisia and facilitate the rapid interdiction of supplies traveling by a Tripoli to Rommel's forces in Libya. However, Tunis was much too close to the Axis airfields in Sicily and Sardinia for any hope of success. A compromise would be to land at Barney, some 300 miles closer to Tunis than Algiers. Limited resources dictated that the Allies could only make three landings and Eisenhower who believed that any plan must include landings at Iran and Algiers, had two main alternatives, either to land at Casablanca, Iran and Algiers and then make as rapid a move as possible to Tunis some 500 miles east of Algiers once the Vichy opposition was suppressed. Or land at Iran, Algiers and Barney and then advance overland to Casablanca some 500 miles west of Iran. He favored the latter because of the advantages it gave to an early capture of Tunis and also because the Atlantic swells off Casablanca presented considerably greater risks to an amphibious landing there than would be encountered in the Mediterranean. The combined chiefs of staff, however, were concerned that should Operation Torch precipitate Spain to abandon neutrality and join the Axis, the Straits of Gibraltar could be closed cutting the entire Allied forces' lines of communication. They therefore chose the Casablanca option as the less risky since the forces in Algeria and Tunisia could be supplied overland from Casablanca in the event of closure of the Straits. Eisenhower in accepting this pointed out that the decision removed the early capture of Tunis from the probable to only the remotely possible because of the extra time it would afford the Axis to move forces into Tunisia. Intelligence gathering, in July 1941, Miech Sisalai Wikowski set up Agency Africa, one of the Second World War's most successful intelligence organizations. His Polish allies in these endeavors included Lieutenant Colonel Guido Langer and Major Maximilian Sia and registered trademark Angstrom 1 Quarter Key. 
The information gathered by the agency was used by the Americans and British in planning the amphibious November 1942 Operation Torch landings in North Africa. Preliminary contact with Vichy French, to gauge the feeling of the Vichy French forces, Murphy was appointed to the American consulate in Algeria. His cover mission was to determine the mood of the French forces and to make contact with elements that might support an Allied invasion. He succeeded in contacting several French officers, including General Charles Mast, the French commander-in-chief in Algiers. These officers were willing to support the Allies, but asked for a clandestine conference with a senior Allied general in Algeria. Major General Mark W. Clark a Euro 1 of Eisenhower's senior commander a Euro was dispatched to Churchill in Algeria aboard the British submarine HMS A. Seraph a Euro passing itself off as an American submarine a Euro, and met with these Vichy French officers on October 21, 1942. With help from the resistance, the Allies also succeeded in slipping French General Henri Giraud out of Vichy France on HMS Seraph intending to offer him the post of commander-in-chief of French forces in North Africa after the invasion. However, Giroud would take no position lower than commander-in-chief of all the invading forces, a job already given to Eisenhower. When he was refused, he decided to remain a spectator in this affair. Battle The Allies organized three amphibious task forces to seize the key ports and airports of Morocco and Algeria simultaneously targeting Casablanca, Iran and Algiers. Successful completion of these operations was to be followed by an advance eastwards into Tunisia. The Western Task Force comprised American units, with Major General George S. Patton in command and Rear Admiral Henry K. Hewitt heading the naval operations. This Western Task Force consisted of the U.S. 2nd Armored Division and the U.S. 3rd and 9th Infantry Divisions a Euro 35,000 a troops in a convoy of over 100 a ships. They were transported directly from the U.S. in the first of a new series of UG convoys providing logistic support for the North African campaign. The Center Task Force, aimed at Iran, included the U.S. 509th Parachute Infantry Regiment, the U.S. 1st Infantry Division, and the U.S. 1st Armored Division a Euro a total of 18,500 troops. They sailed from Britain and were commanded by Major General Lloyd Fredendal, the naval forces being commanded by Commodore Thomas Truebridge. The Eastern Task Force a Euro aimed at Algiers a Euro was commanded by Lieutenant General Kenneth Anderson and consisted of two brigades from the British 78th and the U.S. 34th Infantry Divisions, along with two British commando units totaling 20,000 troops. During the landing phase the force was to be commanded by U.S. Major General Charles W. Ryder, commander of the 34th Division, as it was felt that a U.S.-led invasion would be more acceptable to the French defenders than one led by the British. Many British troops wore American uniform, for the same reason. Naval forces were commanded by Vice Admiral Sir Harold Burrow, U-Boats operating in the eastern Atlantic area crossed by the invasion convoys, had been drawn away to attack trade convoy SL-125. Some historians have suggested the timing of this trade convoy was an intentional tactical diversion to prevent submarine attacks on the troop transports. Aerial operations were split into two, east of Cape Tinez in Algeria, with British aircraft under Air Marshal Sir William Welsh and west of Cape Tinez, all American aircraft under Major General Jimmy Doolittle, under the direct command of Major General Patton. Curtis P-40s of the 33rd Fighter Group were launched from United States Navy escort carriers and landed at Port Laoti on November 10. Additional air support was provided by the carrier Usa Ranger, whose squadrons intercepted Vichy aircraft and bombed hostile ships. Casablanca the Western Task Force landed before daybreak on November 8, 1942, at three points in Morocco, Safi, Fatala, and Midaya Port Laoti. Because it was hoped that the French would not resist, there were no preliminary bombardments. This proved to be a costly error as French defenses took a toll of American landing forces. On the night of November 7, Pro-Allied General Antoine Bar copyright though it attempted a coup d'état against the French command in Morocco, so that he could surrender to the Allies the next day. His forces surrounded the villa of General Charles Nogueres, the Vichy loyal High Commissioner. However, 
Nogo's telephoned loyal forces, who stopped the coup. In addition, the coup attempt alerted Nogo's to the impending Allied invasion, and he immediately bolstered French coastal defences. At Safi, the landings were mostly successful. The landings were begun without covering fire, in the hope that the French would not resist at all. However, once French coastal batteries opened fire, Allied warships returned fire. By the time General Harmon arrived, French snipers had pinned the assault troops on Safi's beaches. Most of the landings occurred behind schedule. Carrier aircraft destroyed a French truck convoy bringing reinforcements to the beach defences. Safi surrendered on the afternoon of November 8. By November 10, the remaining defenders were pinned down, and the bulk of Harman's forces raced to join the siege of Casablanca. At Port Laiorti, the landing troops were uncertain of their position, and the second wave was delayed. This gave the French defenders time to organize resistance, and the remaining landings were conducted under artillery bombardment. With the assistance of air support from the carriers, the troops pushed ahead, and the objectives were captured. At Fatala, weather disrupted the landings. The landing beaches again came under French fire after daybreak. Patton landed at 8 o'clock, and the beachheads were secure later in the day. The Americans surrounded the port of Casablanca by November 10, and the city surrendered an hour before the final assault was due to take place. Casablanca was the principal French Atlantic naval base after German occupation of the European coast. The naval battle of Casablanca resulted from a sortie of French cruisers, destroyers, and submarines opposing the landings. A cruiser, six destroyers, and six submarines were destroyed by American gunfire and aircraft. The incomplete French battleship Jean Bart Euro, which was docked and immobile Euro fired on the landing force with her one working gun turret until disabled by American gunfire. Two American destroyers were damaged. Iran. The center task force was split between three beaches, two west of Iran and one east. Landings at the westernmost beach were delayed because of a French convoy which appeared while the minesweepers were clearing a path. Some delay and confusion, and damage to landing ships, was caused by the unexpected shallowness of water and sandbars. Although periscope observations had been carried out, no reconnaissance parties had landed on the beaches to determine the local maritime conditions. This was in contrast to later amphibious assaults a Euro such as Operation Nova Lorga Euro in which considerable weight was given to pre-invasion reconnaissance. The U.S. 1st Ranger Battalion landed east of Iran and quickly captured the shore battery at Arzu. An attempt was made to land U.S. infantry at the harbor directly, in order to quickly prevent destruction of the port facilities and scuttling of ships. The Operation a Euro codenamed Operation Reservista Euro failed as the two Banff-class sloops were destroyed by crossfire from the French vessels there. The Vichy French naval fleet broke from the harbour and attacked the Allied invasion fleet but its ships were all sunk or driven ashore. French batteries in the invasion fleet exchanged fire throughout eight a year on November 9, with French troops defending Iran and the surrounding area stubbornly. Heavy fire from the British battleships brought about Iran's surrender on November 9. Airborne landings Torch was the first major airborne assault carried out by the U.S. The U.S. 509th Parachute Infantry Regiment flew all the way from Britain, over Spain, intending to drop near Iran and capture airfields at Tafraui and Lazar copyright near respectively 15 miles and 5 miles south of Iran. The operation was marked by weather, navigational and communication problems. Poor weather over Spain and the extreme range caused widespread scattering and forced 30 of the 37 aircraft to land in the dry salt lake to the west of the objective. Nevertheless both airports were captured. Algiers, resistance and coup, as agreed at Churchill, in the early hours of November 8 400 French resistance fighters staged a coup in the city of Algiers. Starting at midnight. The force under the command of Henri d'Astier de la Vigerie and Joseph copywriter Boca seized key targets, including the telephone exchange, radio station, governor's house and the headquarters of 19th Corps. Robert Murphy took some men and then drove to the residence of General Alphonse Juin, the senior French army officer in North Africa. While they surrounded his house Murphy attempted to persuade him to side with the Allies. 
however, he was treated to a surprise. Admiral Frenet Section Wadalana Euro the commander of all French forces Euro was also in Algiers on a private visit. Juin insisted on contacting Darlin, and Murphy was unable to persuade either to side with the Allies. In the early morning, the local gendarmerie arrived and released both Juin and Darlin. Invasion On November 8, 1942, the invasion commenced with landings split between three beaches a Euro two west of Algiers and one east. Under overall command of Major General Charles W. Ryder, Commander U.S. 34th Infantry Division, British 11th Brigade Group from British 78th Infantry Division, landed on the right-hand beach, U.S. 168th Regimental Combat Team, from U.S. 34th Infantry Division, supported by 6th Commando and most of 1st Commando on the middle beach while U.S. 39th Regimental Combat Team, also from 34th Division, supported by the remaining five troops from 1st Commando landed on the left-hand beach. British 36th Brigade Group from 78th Division stood by in floating reserve. Though some landings went to the wrong beaches, this was immaterial because of the extremely low level of French opposition. All the coastal batteries had been neutralized by French resistance, and one French commander openly welcomed the landing allies. The only fighting took place in the port of Algiers itself where in Operation Terminal 2 British destroyers attempted to land a party of U.S. Rangers directly onto the dock, in order to prevent the French destroying the port facilities and scuttling their ships. Heavy artillery fire prevented one destroyer from landing but the other was able to debark 250 Rangers before it too was driven back to sea. The landed troops pushed quickly inland and General Dewin surrendered the city to the Allies at 18 o'clock. Aftermath, Political Results it quickly became clear that Giraud lacked the authority to take command of the French forces. He preferred to wait in Gibraltar for the results of the landing. However, Darlin in Algiers had such authority. Eisenhower, with the support of Roosevelt and Churchill, made an agreement with Darlin, recognizing him as French High Commissioner in North Africa. In return, Darlin ordered all French forces in North Africa to cease resistance to the Allies and cooperate instead. The deal was made on November 10, and French resistance ceased almost at once. When Adolf Hitler learned of Darlan's deal with the Allies, he immediately ordered the occupation of Vichy France and sent troops to Tunisia. The deal meant that the officials appointed by the Vichy regime would remain in power in North Africa. No role was provided for Free France, which was supposed to be France's government in exile, and had taken charge in other French colonies. This deeply offended Charles de Gaulle as head of Free France. It also offended much of the British and American public, who regarded all Vichy French as Nazi collaborators, and Darlin as one of the worst. Eisenhower insisted however that he had no real choice if his forces were to move on against the Axis in Tunisia, rather than fight the French in Algeria and Morocco. Though de Gaulle had no official power in North Africa, much of the population now publicly declared free French allegiance, putting pressure on Darlan. Then on December 24, Darlan was assassinated by Fernand Bonnier de la Chapelle, a French local of obscure allegiance. Giraud replaced Darlan, but like him replaced few of the Vichyate officials. He even ordered the arrest of the leaders of the Algiers coup of November 8, with no opposition from Murphy. The French North African government gradually became active in the Allied war effort. The weak French troops in Tunisia did not resist German troops arriving by air. Admiral Esteva, the commander there, obeyed orders to that effect from Vichy. The Germans took the airfields there and brought in more troops. The French troops withdrew to the west, and within a few days began to skirmish against the Germans, encouraged by a few American and British troops who had reached the area. While this was of minimal military effect, it committed the French to the Allied side. Later all French forces were withdrawn from action to be properly re-equipped by the Allies. Giraud supported this, but also preferred to maintain the old regime in North Africa. Under pressure from the Allies, and from de Gaulle's supporters, the French regime shifted, with Vichy officials gradually replaced, and its more offensive decrees rescinded. In June 1943, Giraud and de Gaulle agreed to form the Comité Copyright Front a section A's de Libre Copyright Ration Nationale, 
with members from both the North African government and de Gaulle's French National Committee. In November 1943, de Gaulle became head of the CFLN, and de jure head of government of France, recognized by the US and Britain. Another political effect of Torch was that the previously Vichyate government of French West Africa now joined the Allies. Military Consequences, Toulon One of the terms the Second Armistice at Compiègne agreed to by the Germans was that southern France would remain free of German occupation and self-governed from Vichy. As a country out of the war and officially neutral, it was expected that all French forces, particularly overseas, would resist attacks by the Allies, per the principle of armed neutrality. This included use of the French fleet against Germany. The lack of determined resistance and the new de Gaulle policies in North Africa convinced the Germans that Vichy could not be trusted to continue this policy. Southern France was immediately occupied and troops moved to seize the French fleet in the port of Toulon. The naval strength of the Axis in the Mediterranean would have been greatly increased by this seizure, but every ship was scuttled at dock by the French Navy before they could be taken. Tunisia after the German and Italian occupation of Vichy France and their unsuccessful attempt to capture the interned French fleet at Toulon, the French armor copyright EDA Euro unregistered trademark of Freak sided with the Allies, providing a third corps for Anderson. Elsewhere, French warships a Euro such as the battleship Richelieu a Euro rejoined the Allies. On November 9, Axis forces started to build up in Tunisia unopposed by the local French forces under General Barra copyright. Racked with indecision, Barra Copyright moved his troops into the hills and formed a defensive line from Tibur Sork through Mejiz El Bab and ordered that anyone trying to pass through the line would be shot. On November 19, the German commander a Euro Walter Ring a Euro demanded passage for his troops across the bridge at Mejiz and was refused. The Germans attacked the poorly equipped French units twice and were driven back. However, the French had taken heavy casualties and, Lacking artillery and armor, Barra copyright was forced to withdraw. After consolidating in Algeria, the Allies struck into Tunisia. Forces in the British First Army under Lieutenant General Kenneth Anderson came to within 40 miles of Tunis before a counterattack at Gediata thrust them back. In January 1943, German and Italian troops under General Erwin Rommel a Euro retreating westward from Libye or Euro reached Tunisia. The British Eighth Army in the East a Euro commanded by General Bernard Montgomery a Euro stopped around Tripoli to allow reinforcements to arrive and build up the Allied advantage. In the West, the forces of First Army came under attack at the end of January, being forced back from the 4D pass and then suffering a reversal at Sidi Bouzid on 14 a Euro February 15. Axis forces pushed on to Spietla and then to the Kasserine Pass on February 19 where the U.S. II Corps retreated in disarray until heavy Allied reinforcements halted the Axis advance on February 22. General Harold Alexander arrived in Tunisia in late February to take charge of the new 15th Army Group headquarters, which had been created to take over all control of both the 8th Army and the Allied forces already fighting in Tunisia. The Axis forces again attacked eastward at Medinin on March 6 but were easily repulsed by 8th Army. Rommel counseled Hitler to allow a full retreat to a defensible line but was denied, and on March 9 Rommel left Tunisia to be replaced by Jar 1 quarter a G.E.N. von Arnim, who had to spread his forces over 100 miles of northern Tunisia. The setbacks at Kasserine forced the Allies to consolidate their forces and develop their lines of communication and administration so that they could support a major attack. The 1st and 8th Armies then attacked the Axis in April. Hard fighting followed but the Allies cut off the Germans and Italians from support by naval and air forces between Tunisia and Sicily. On May 6, as the culmination of Operation Vulcan, the British took Tunis, and American forces reached Bizert. By May 13, the Axis forces in Tunisia had surrendered. This opened the way for the Allied invasion of Sicily. See also List of World War II battles, Miech Zysai Zygfried Sawowikowski RMSA Molten Troopship, North African Campaign Timeline, Operation Flagpole, Operation Husky, Operation Kingpin, References, Notes, Bibliography, War Official Reports, Lake Aisrena Section A's, 
La part de l'or are copyright systems for a section as dans layer copyright varnements de freak du nord, commissariat à l'information of free French comité copyright national, London, August 1943. Or correspondent report. Melvin K. Whiteley The, Main Street's New Neighbors, J. B. Lippincott Company, Philadelphia, 1945. Academic Works. Abolka, Professor Jose Copyright. La Vistusa Copyright, Christine. 8 November 1942, Les Armes Copyrighters Arme Copyright Recaine Anglaise Pren and Alder N. Quinn's Hers. Espoira, Alan, Bruce, 1999. Exit Rommel, The Tunisian Campaign, 1942-43. Stackpole Military History Series. Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, Stackpole Books. ISBN A 978 0 8117-3381-6 Anderson, Charles R. Algeria French Morocco 8 November 1942 November 11, 1942. WWII Campaigns. Washington, United States Army Center of Military History. ISBN A 0 16 038105-3. CMH Pub 72-11A. Raya, William B. Operation Torch, The Allied Gamble to Invade North Africa. New York, St. Martin's Presser, Dan Ann, Professor Eve Maxime. La vie politique à Alger de 1940 and 1944. Paris, L.G.D. Eisenhower, Dwight D. Crusade in Europe. London, William Heinemann. OCLC A 559,866,864. Edwards, Bernard. Da Paragraph Knits and the Wolf Packs. Brockhampton Press. ISBN A 1 86,019 5 Funk, Arthur L. The Politics of Torch. University Press of Kansas, Hague, Arnold. The Allied Convoy System 1939 1945. Naval Institute Press. ISBN A 1 55750 019 3A, Howe, George F. 1957. Northwest Africa, Seizing the Initiative in the West. The United States Army in World War II. Washington, D.C. United States Army Center of Military History. CMH Pub 6 1A, La Vistusa Copyright, Christine Lafrique du Nord Dans La Gouette. 1939-1945. Paris, Alban Michella, Louis, Adrian S. Omaha Beach, A Flawed Victory. Chapel Hill, University of North Carolina Press. ISBN A 0-8078-2609-X. Mayer, Leo J. 1960. Chapter 7, The Decision to Invade North Africa. In Kent Roberts Greenfield. Command Decisions. United States Army Center of Military History. CMH Pub 70-7A, Michel, Henri. Dalon. Paris, Hochetta, Moses, Sam. At All Costs. How a Crippled Ship and Two American Merchant Mariners Turned the Tide of World War II. Random Hauser, Playfair, Major General ISO. Moliny, Brigadier CJC. With Flynn, Captain F.C. and Gleave, Group Captain T.P., First Pub. HMSO, 1966. Butler, Sir James, ed. The Mediterranean and Middle East, Volume 4, The Destruction of the Axis Forces in Africa. History of the Second World War, United Kingdom Military Series. Uckfield, UK, Naval and Military Press. ISBN A 1 84574 068 8 Roa, J. and Hummelkin, G. Chronology of the War at Sea 1939-1945. Naval Institute Press. ISBN A 1 55750 105X. Salinas, Alfred Lezama Copyright Rikens en Alga Copyright Rye 1942-1945, Le Matin, Paris. General. Atkinson, Rick. An Army at Dawn. Henry Holt. ISBN A 0 8050 
6288-2A. Further reading, The Decision to Invade North Africa Part of Command Decisions A publication of the United States Army Center of Military History, Algeria French Morocco A book in the U.S. Army Campaigns of World War II Series of the United States Army Center of Military History, see also, 17th Armored Engineer Battalion, External Links, A Detailed History of November 8, 1942, Combined Ops, History and Photos of the Operations of the USS Ranger and its Air Group During Operation Torch, The Accord Franco Armor. Copyright Recon of Marcel Mann, Royal Engineers Museum Royal Engineers and Second World War, Report of the Commander-in-Chief Allied Forces to the Combined Chief of Staff on Operations in North Africa, Operation Torch, Allied Invasion of North Africa Article by Williamson Murray, Eisenhower's Report on Operation Torch, Operation Torch Motion Pictures from the National Archives, Operation Torch, Operation Torch World War II.